Bruce Arians just simply wants to have an ego contest with Tom Brady. Really, dude? Really? You got to be kidding me. Cole Sports presents on the Daily. Well, happy first day of December, VIP. Cole Johnson's right here, live and in living color on the Daily Sun Tab, presented by Cole Sports. And this is a show where we do provide you with content Monday through Friday. So subscribe to this channel if you want to be up on all the latest in all the sports news. Enough of that. Let's get to this. Because it has been itching in my heart the last three weeks. I've been hearing chirping where it shouldn't be. And it's coming from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers head coach Bruce Arians in regards to his Hall of Fame to be quarterback Tom Brady. Now, I may not be the biggest Tom Brady supporter. However, I can spot when when criticism should and shouldn't be levied. And criticism like this shouldn't be levied the way it's being levied. Now, I'll explain why Bruce Arians receives this week's designation of... uh, Here's why. Starting with the Sunday night tilt, November 8th, against the Saints. Now, this was supposed to be which team was going to have the inside track to the NFC, uh, NFC South Championship and quite possibly the number one overall seed in the National Football Conference. Well, that turned out to be a 38-3 butt stomping in the favor of the Saints. And unfortunately for the Bucs, that meant they got swept by the Saints. They lost both games, unfortunately, this year to the Saints. So then they take their butt hurt (laughs) to Charlotte, and they put a stomping on the Panthers to the tune of 46-23. Then they come back home feeling pretty good about themselves, having two big time home games on national television waiting for them. First, it was a Monday night tilt against the Rams. Then it was a Sunday afternoon at 425 p.m. tilt against the Chiefs. Now, for for those, uh, all right, VIP, if you're not in the know about scheduling in NFLs, Uh, NFL games, the number one slot to be scheduled for any, any team would be Sunday night. It used to be Monday night. Now it's Sunday night. That's the number one slot you want to be on. The number three slot is Monday night football. Yes, I know. Yeah, Monday, Monday night football slipped from number one to number three, which means the number two slot that you want to be is Sunday afternoon with a kickoff of 425 p.m. Because normally that is when you have the second biggest crowd in a week to watch football. So out of the four games that the Buccaneers played, three of them were on each of those time slots. And they went, oh, for three. Because the Rams game that I mentioned, that was on Monday Night Football, they lost that one 27-24, and then they invited the Chiefs the very next Sunday, this past Sunday, and they also lost that game to the tune of 27-24. And why was that? Many factors. Number one, where is the running game? Come on, Bruce. I get the I, I, I get the, the philosophy that you have. I, I totally get it. Your, your, your philosophy, especially on offense, is simply put, quote, no risk it, no biscuit. Close quote. 
well, I guess uh, the risk that you're taking is resulting in a lot of flour and unmade biscuits. Because I'm hearing a lot of fans in the Tampa St. Petersburg area saying, No! <sighs> Number two, you have a 43-year-old quarterback who has a spaghetti arm and has had one to begin with. And you're asking him to throw the ball at least 30 yards downfield at least six times, maybe even more than that, a game. And I know the, the little boy in Tom Brady is saying, yes. but just about everybody who knows how Tom Brady operates best is basically saying, oh, no, 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 which turns to the other factor as to why the Bucks have lost the last three home games they played, and that is, well, you heard the score. They gave up 38 to the Saints, 27 to the Rams, 27 to the Chiefs, which means that their defense is suffering. No pass rush or very little pass rush to speak of, but more importantly, the secondary is, I'm having a hard time coming up with the, the right word. Well, maybe this will help. So you have a quarterback, an aging quarterback that doesn't have the cannon arm. I mean, he can throw the ball downfield at least twice a game. But to ask him to throw it that many times down the field, that's asking a little too much of that quarterback to do, even at 43. A secondary that is absolutely torchworthy, and I don't mean in terms of they are fire. I mean, they are on fire in terms of they just get burnt like toast. And the fact that they have a running game, they have a top five rusher. <laughs> but they only run the ball roughly 17 times a game. All of that is a prescription to defeats. One after the other after the other. But what does Bruce Arians do? Well, he just pops off and he says things like, quote, well, it all works well at practice. I, I mean, he's making all the throws in practice, but uh, in the games, that's not on me. That's on the quarterback. Close quote. Or in another loss. Quote. Look, I told him that he needs to not make those mistakes. He needs to check down the right reads and he needs to execute the plays. He's not executing the way the way that we practiced. Close quote. <sighs> Come on! This is really basic and simple. And there's people who are, are, are wanting to point the finger at Tom Brady for things. I'll point the finger at Tom Brady about this one thing. In the 27-24 loss to the Rams, Brady was in his feelings. He did not shake hands with the opposing quarterback, Jared Goff, or any of the Rams players. He just went, simply just ran off the field. But he rarely gets criticism like that. Meanwhile, you have Cam Newton getting criticism for pouting during the Super Bowl after taking that L and basically giving very terse, short answers and pouting like a 10-year-old. Now, I don't subscribe to any adult acting like a child, but I also don't subscribe to an adult acting like a doofus and an a-hole and just ignoring somebody because you lost and being in your feelings. Both are out of bounds. Both suck as quarterback, uh, quarterback, um, uh, not acumen, but decorum. Both are out of bounds. Both are unprofessional. Not color, position. For the position of quarterback, pouting while losing or having a stiff upper lip while losing and giving the thumb, uh, giving the basically the, the thumbing up your nose to, to the opposing team for beating your behind and not giving them the proper shaking of hand and saying, good job, you got the better of us in this game. Both are unprofessional. 
And Brady got the message because after the end of the 24, 27, 24 butt whooping, and it was a butt whooping, the game really wasn't that close, that they took to the Chiefs this past Sunday, Brady went to midfield and shook Mahomes' hand. So I'm not, cap- this is not I'm caping for Brady. This is, I'm dealing with the 60, pl- I'm dealing with the 60 plus year old adult in the room, not the mid 40s guy in the room. Arians, you're the head coach. You have the risk it, but no, uh, no risk it, no biscuit philosophy, but you have a quarterback that you cannot execute like that with. So what you have to do is you have to tailor your game after his skill set. Now, it's not like you have no prior experience into doing that. And it's not as if you don't know how to work with quarterbacks because after all, you've worked with Carson Palmer and Ben Roethlisberger and Andrew Luck. I mean, it's this isn't new to you. You know how to work with quarterbacks. Tom Brady is just yet another example. Now I know you sort of you sort of shake in a bit and your confidence sort of took a hit in dealing with how disastrous Jameis Winston was last year. However, I think you're starting to understand that not all of that up and down 30 touchdown, 30 interception performance last year from from Jameis was all on Jameis because you're seeing a second quarterback making the same mistakes in your system. So when you have two NFL quarterbacks making the same mistakes in the same system, guess where the fault lies? The system. (laughs) (laughs) This is what you need to do, and you need to do this with haste. Arians. Number one, utilize Leonard Fournette and Ronald Jones. Run the ball. Run it at least 30 times a game. Run the ball, R U N exclamation point. Forget the no risk it, no biscuit, because if you do the no risk it, no biscuit, you're risking it and you're risking your team to be out the playoffs. Run the ball. Be committed to pounding the rock because you know what that will do with that spaghetti arm 43 year old quarterback that actually has made a lot of money off of dinking and dunking. It will help him gather the confidence. I know he's played in the NFL 20 years. He doesn't need to have a confidence boost. Who are you kidding? If you have that line, which is okay in front of him, like the Bucs offensive line is, and you still have the defensive, the opposing defensive line crowd in that pocket, you'll tap dance faster than Gregory Hines too, just like Brady is doing. You will ease the pass rush. You will bring more to the box which means you can have your no-risk-it, no-biscuit philosophy with less defenders to to stop your deep ball. And guess what? The completion rating of that deep ball will go up because what is sucking the life out of your Buccaneers team is that your 43-year-old quarterback has thrown the most passes this year. You don't need to do that because you're putting your wide receivers at risk, your offensive line at risk, and your secondary at risk because you can't do the football Rockettes routine of one, two, three, putt, one, two, three, putt, one, two, three, putt. As you've seen with the Saints, Rams, and Kid Chiefs, that is what you're doing. It's like you're having the Rockettes, but they're the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So if you do those three things, I think you will not have as many problems as you've had, and you won't be sipping tea in press conferences saying, well, (laughs) what I do is fine. My practice is great. My game plan is fine. (laughs) It's that quarterback that sucks. (laughs) But you ain't heard it from me. (sighs) Tone down. Yeah. 
Now, if you want this shirt that you see right before your very eyes, the description box below has all the details provided to you as to how to get it and how, what style you want to get it in. And if you feel as though, well, you know what, Cole, you're being a little too harsh on Bruce Arians. It, it, it really is all Tom Brady's fault. Or if you're like me, you're thinking, well, mm, Tom Brady, yes, he's at fault too, but Bruce Arians needs to actually tailor his offense around the talents of Tom Brady. In either case, like this video and share it to all of your social media. Comment below because your comments mean the world to me, VIP. Thank you so much. Don't forget, hit the notification bell and, su and subscribe to this channel for all content that emanates from here. Well, that's all the time I have. Thank you so much, VIP. I enjoy you. I love you. I do this for you. This has been yet another installment of Cole Sports on the visual end on the